So somebody pointed out that in my last video it was a little dark towards the end and that my lighting was off. I don't know what you're talking about. Seemed perfect to me. So welcome to the second part of the review of the Citizen C010, also known as the voice memo. And we'll be taking a look inside the watch, we'll be opening it up and see what Citizen has done to cramp all this uh, technology inside such a small case. And we are going to be looking individually at what each module and what each PCB does. So it's going to be packed with information. So let's get started. So to open the watch, we are going to need a pair of tweezers and a regular flathead screwdriver. It has a small notch right here where you insert your opening tool which can be uh, one of those dedicated opening tools or you can just use a screwdriver. Uh, my advice is if you slip the screwdriver in there do not twist it but rather do an upwards motion because if, we, if you twist it you will end up damaging this uh, lip and it will look uh, terrible. So I will just insert mine and it just needs to pop right up. Here we go. And there we have some writing. Uh, the date where when the battery was last changed. Uh, I'm assuming it it's not 88 because I know I changed the batteries on this one myself uh, but I left the writing there and you have uh, some reset uh, instructions okay the watch uses two pairs of 386 batteries and this is for the sound part I'm just going to put them aside that those are for the sound part and for the digital watch. Actually, this watch uses a different battery for the analog, which we'll see in just a bit. So now we're going to go in details through each part of the watch. So we'll start with the case here and we'll end up with the circuitry in this place. So this is the analog part of the watch and as you can see this is uh, standalone, not connected to any of the other circuits. Uh, watch movement, uh, it's operated by a battery, it's uh, 377 battery a small one so one of the uh, gimmicks of this watch is usually when people put it up for sale if it hasn't been to a watchmaker or uh, they haven't looked in the manual they will usually say that the analog part is not working simply because the battery for the analog part is not accessible directly unless you remove the memory module 
So whenever this battery gets depleted, to change it, you have to remove this battery module, which uh, is uh, which has three screws. Here we have the speaker, and one interesting thing is that uh, the speaker on the watch doubles as the microphone. So uh, whenever you press record, this will uh, the the signal from this will be recorded in the memory and when you press play uh, the signal will be returned through the same uh, device and one thing from which you can tell if a watch like this has had heavy use apart of course from the fact that uh, there are scratches and age related wear is usually uh, behind this plate there is a protective it's like uh, like it's, it's like cotton but it's it's plastic so they're, they're plastic fibers the the white uh, the white uh, protective piece under the plate usually this is grimy because when you uh, record to the watch you have to speak into this and uh, the spray from your mouth this is gross uh, will end up collecting in these small notches To remove the uh, movement of the analog part, you have to pull out uh, the small crown. This is the back case. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't have any uh, piezo ceramic speakers. It's just a plain piece of metal. Here we have uh, a part of the plastic cradle, uh, as we have here. These are the battery connectors and they are uh, very beautifully shaped. They're like butterflies or some sort. Um, they are all different and they also take uh, battery power from the two main batteries uh, to the memory module and they also take power to the watch control uh, circuitry. Uh, this is a frame that holds the uh, electronic part, uh, well the whole module uh, in place so it doesn't rattle around in the case. And here we have the memory module. So the memory module is uh, 64 uh, kilobits uh, of RAM memory and uh, as you can see in that age, uh, imagine how much memory you can store on a chip this big Here's my finger for reference uh, with today's computing power. So quite a lot. Back then they had 64 kilobits uh, to record on this uh, piece of memory. And this is all that this circuit does. It's, uh, this PCB is for uh, the memory module. Moving on to the watch control circuit. Uh, this is divided and you can see it has uh, Two modules. Uh, the larger one is the watch control module and the other one uh, is an amplifier circuit. Uh, what I'm saying here is from the manual so I believe that's pretty accurate so this is an amplifier circuit this is the watch control module uh, and here you have uh, the small uh, zebra strip connectors. Uh, one thing to mention, this entire circuit connects to the memory module through this very small zebra strip. So if you take one of these apart and you forget to put this, you won't be able to record anything. Time will show up, but you won't be able to record. This is the LCD and you can see it has a zebra stri uh, strip attached. Here you have a piece of plastic that fits behind the LCD to keep it in place. Here you have a reflective uh, piece that goes in between the LCD and this, this pla uh, green plastic uh, uh, holder. Uh, Citizen tried to match, if you have a golden watch, uh, they try to match the background of the LCD, make it a little golden. If you have the silver version, it will be more silver. I don't know if you can realize that this is gold. Okay, now I can see it. And here we have 
the contact for the three buttons on the front. As you can see, it has these small bumps. These were not that common on uh, watches back then. Usually you had like a piece of metal that bounces, sort of like my, like my tweezers, that bounces up and down to make the contact. This is the kind of uh, construction you see if you disassemble a micro contact today, you know, like if you have a clicky contact, then that's what you're going to find, a piece of metal with a small dome in it, and that's how the contact is made. That is it for the review. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've learned something. I hope you've learned something. And join me next time when we will be reviewing another iconic digital watch. Until then, keep wearing your nerdy digital watches and look cool doing it.